There's a whole movement in the United States called 21st Century Skills, and we have the same thing in Canada. And I was talking to a vice president of a college in the U.S., and he looked at our work, he's a PhD guy, and he said, we've got all the whys figured out, and we've got all the whats figured out. You're the first to have figured out the how. How do we do this? Because there's all kinds of research on why we need this, why creativity, innovation, critical thinking is important. We've got lots of papers on what we need to do, what America needs to do to move forward. But nobody's figured out an integrated how. And that's really what I've tried to do, to say, here's an integrated way to learn these core skills of critical and creative and analytical thinking, problem solving, interpersonal communication, collaboration with others in a highly diverse environment, and then ability to move forward from there. The World Economic Forum, about two months ago, came up with the top skills for 2020. Number one is complex problem solving. Number two is critical thinking. Number three is creativity. Number four is people management. And number 10 is cognitive flexibility. So when you look at those kinds of skills, you don't learn those in school, you learn subjects. And I really felt that if we could build, identify strategies and skills that could help people learn those kinds of things, they're gonna be much more effective as things continually change. What we then found was, when we started working with uh, at-risk students, that they were low in a particular type of thinking. And, and then if they could learn those skills, they could be much more likely to be uh, effective. What we found is that uh, the most effective people are, are, have some kind of balance and have a mix of things that they like to do but have worked on their game. So when we started the venture, I wanted to make sure we had something that had a combination of simplicity, that's where the traffic light came from, and also the research-based foundation. So we went to a company and I, I went to the senior guy and I said, I want to get the balance. He said, Bob, there's lots of research tools out there that are, that are sound, that are really sound, but are completely irrelevant. They're so complex, nobody understands them. So we hired, a, we hired um, the, this company and they brought in an expert who's now the Canada Research Chair on Occupational Health and Psychology for the whole country and uh, to get the discipline to design the instrument. So we followed all the scientific protocols. We did the original norming on 1,000 and then 8,000 and 25,000 people. So it's quite robust from 11 different countries.